The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to McStabber Studios, Kansas City, a domain divided. I am, of course, going to be the storyteller for this game, Shanky McStabber. And I am Mama McStabber, and I will be playing Katarina Rakosi of Clan Zamitsi. I am Dale, and I'll be playing uh, Callum McFarlane of Clan Venturin. And I am Ree, and I will be playing Rashad Giovanni of Clan Hakata. I am House. I play Bo Solomon of Clan Toreador. Hi, I'm Mischievous Red, and I'll be playing Gwyn Schultz of the Ministry. You gotta say it. Come on, Andy, you gotta say it. I don't know if he may not be able to unmute. It's a brand new stream, of course. Let's see, we'll do it this way. Hang on. He can't unmute. No, no, he's unmuted on our screen. Nope, he's no, still he's muted. Not. Oh, of course, it's a brand new stream. Let's see here. Uh, nope, I don't know why he can't talk. We're going to let him figure it out real quick before I keep going forward. Double, uh, he was talking a little while ago, which is pretty funny. Yeah, that's weird. It won't let him unmute. That curse you were talking about previously? Yeah, somebody shouldn't have said something in chat, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mute him. Which is what's hilarious. Let's try this. Oh, wrong person. I put the wrong one in there. Hang on. My bad. My bad. And now he's gone. He turned his camera off. There we go. Kind of. Not really. Okay, now talk. Still this can't is hear. a whole nother thing. There you this are. This is a whole nother thing. Uh, <laughs> I am Timber Brad 411, and I'll be playing Andy Sawyer. If, I guess Clan Tremere. <laughs> He hates the fact he ended up at Tremere so badly that his mic doesn't even want to work. So, you know, this is live. Unlike the Chicago Chronicle, there's no fixing shit in post, everybody. This is how this is. I'd like to thank everyone for coming to the very first stream of this brand new Chronicle. Kansas City, the domain divided. Now, you wonder why we're starting off in Chicago rather than Kansas City. And I guess after the events of tonight, you'll probably understand why. So, 
uh, please sit back and enjoy. This Chronicle is starting shortly before the end of the events in the Windy City Chronicle. What started off as a peaceful night in terms of general kindred life has been shattered. Three buildings have exploded tonight. One by the college, one the Metropolitan Police Department, and one Chicago Memorial. And after these explosions, of course, it's all over the news, all over TV. But for a group of kindred, their night is just beginning. You have each been summoned to the Chicago Metropolitan Museum of Art, to the Met, summoned to meet with Sheriff Damien. And when you arrive, Damien is nowhere to be found. And you all are left wandering the entryway as a group. Some of you know each other. Some of you, you don't know anyone here. But while you wait for Damien, I'm going to let you all feel each other out, we'll say. Anyone, anyone know? Anyone know why we're here? No. I don't usually. I was just going to ask and see a lot of invites. I mean, I think the situation outside might have a little something to do with it. Well, I know I didn't do it, so. Did any of it's you? Above my, it's a bit above my pay grade, but from what I understand, some people are having a go at it. I don't know who did it. But all I know is I'm going to have to be back at my hospital because they're going to be wanting me to take care of it. I, it's a guess, but I think we're meant to stay out of it. <laughs> you don't typically get invited to stand around if we're meant to take a part, take a place in the game. Or they're I mean, going to try to blame us for it. I hate to say I agree with... I'm sorry, I didn't quite get your name i don't think we've met andy it seems odd that they would call us all here we don't really interact much cat's phone buzzes she actually puts it on silent katarina a pleasure as always Callum, good to see well, you Glad I haven't had to visit you in your place of work recently. How's your girl doing? Very good. Good. Uh, while everyone's waiting to kind of figure out what we're here for, uh, Andy's going to look for a chair and sit down, looking absolutely annoyed that he's even here. With this, obviously, a very uncomfortable group not knowing what's going on. The door opens. In strides Damien. Still looking way too young to be sheriff. Wearing, as always, his baby chorus t-shirt. But tonight, unlike when most of you would normally see Damien around the city, tonight, there's a half dozen people with him. One of them you recognize, Bobby who's normally his driver. But it's clear the sheriff tonight is out in force. You're all here. Good, good. You saw the news, right? It's hard to miss. Mm -hmm. Cat silences her phone again. Yeah, and obviously my employer has too. We've got some problems going on in the city. It seems two nitwits have decided they're going to try to topple the king from his throne. They're going after Jackson. 
normally I'd be handling day-to-day -day stuff, but tonight me and all my people were rather busy. I barely have time for this meeting. So I'm going to be using you to take care of something for me. I am having you all go find someone for me now. You may or may not know Andy there. Andy's with you for a reason. He's your tracker. Andy's job to find him. It's your job to make sure that when he gets there, uh, you bring the person you're sent to locate. All of you met Alexa Santos. Haven't had the pleasure. No reputation, though. Yeah, you're going to go get her. Haven't been able to inform her about the events that have gone on tonight. So you're going to make sure you find her and tell her she needs to come report to me on Prince Jackson's orders. Do we expect her to come along willingly? Why wouldn't she? Well, when things like this happen, people tend to go silent for one of two reasons. They're dead or they're hiding. Well, considering she spent most of her time at Chicago Memorial, there is a chance she didn't get out. Hmm. That's why you're here. I have it on. I would have thought. Go ahead. I would have, I would have thought she would have been hip deep in this already. Well, that's what. We're going to find out. We're going to find out where she's gone so that we can get her involved. If there's a war of praxis going on, the Scourge has some skills that are useful. Have you seen her before, Andy? I don't believe so. And Damien reaches into his pocket, pulls out a picture, shows it to you. There's her face. That should work for you to do what you got to do, right? It's more than sufficient. You get her. Bring her ass. Back here, actually. Tell her to wait for me to return. Is there a caveat to how much of her needs to come back? Yes. All of her. She is a member of this court. It is not advised to break the right of destruction. She is also the scourge. Push too hard and she has the right to invoke the traditions against you. Hooray. Now you see why there's Six of you going. I don't have the manpower for this tonight. And if we fuck up, we're disposable. Hey, don't fuck up then. It's pretty simple, isn't it? It's never simple here. And if she's already dead? Well, then we'll have to check that bridge when we come to it, won't we? Do you still want us to meet you back here? Well, you'll have to tell me. <clears throat> if she's already dead, come back here and wait for me. Either myself or Bobby over here will come by. And I advise you be careful in the streets tonight. Three buildings blown up. Police are starting to cordon off things. I wouldn't be uh, shocked to hear the curfew gets laid down pretty quickly. If we are waylaid in our mission, or do we have permission to engage with our opponents in any way we see fit? Waylaid by who? Uh, if it's one of the ones challenging Praxis, defend yourself. <laughs> and did you say who was challenging Praxis? <laughs> no, I didn't.
are we meant to continue upholding the right of destruction on the, such enemies? And the right of destruction is always held by the prince and those he designates. But I'm not going to lie to you. We got a war going on. Casualties happen. Shit happens. It's not what they know. It's what they can prove. Can we get this on with? It's exactly it. I, that's why I'm warning you to be careful. At the start of a war like this, normally everyone starts coming out of the woodwork too. Handle their grudges under cover of Praxis War. <laughs> Do any of you have any grudges we should know about looking to the group? My clan started with grudges. Many that dislike the family, but not me particularly. I've had some service issues recently, but uh, nothing that would rise to the level of a grudge. You might notice this whole time that Bo has only been half listening. We're in a museum. He's admire. He's kind of eyeing the art and taking that in while we're in here. So he's comprehending, but his eyes are wandering. Gwen just kind of nods at Kat since she already knows a little bit. I'm good. Hey, Bo, have you pissed anybody off recently? Not anyone who didn't deserve it, but no one of imp no one important. I'll let y'all figure that all out. My suggestion started Chicago Memorial. Tracker should be able to find something. And Damien nods his head at, the, at his boys, and they all roll out as a group again leaving you alone in the museum. Maybe to strategize, maybe not. Who knows what you're going to do, but you do have a job to do. Is Bobby still here? Nope, Bobby left with him. Cat silences her phone again. <laughs> I hate it to say it, Cat. You may just want to turn it off. Exactly my thoughts. Doesn't look like you're reporting for shift. Does anyone have a vehicle we can use? She turns it off. Not one that holds more than one person. I've got a Suburban, come on. So you all uh, head out. And as you're heading out of the, the museum, sirens everywhere, police cars racing every which direction, fire trucks. Even at night, you can see the plume of smoke rising multiple spots in the city. Reflecting off the streetlights. As you pile up in the vehicle, uh, the first thing I have to ask everybody, since you're going to be riding in a vehicle to Chicago Memorial, please give me wits awareness. And just real quick, also for the record, Andy will take shotgun without asking anybody because um, gotcha. he is that kind of prick. Yes. Would a specialty for ambushes apply to this? Sure. I'll let you use that one. Let's see, we got five from Gwen. That's a good high number. That's got a three. We got twos flying around. I'm... Andy, Callum. Rashad there uh, gets four after rolling a, uh, a willpower on it. I got three four after willpower. Gwen's got a five. I'll keep that in mind during this this car ride. The numbers, I'll let you know if you notice anything. I'll let the players have. Now that they're in a spot that they can be reasonably sure isn't being monitored, they can talk about what they've got to do tonight. Uh, Andy is pretty much ignoring everybody um, and just getting the um, the things out of his. Uh, little uh, ritual kit um, to get ready to do this ritual as soon as they get to the hospital. Well, looks like there will be plenty of business tomorrow. Yeah. 
Do you all think she's going to come in willingly if we do find her? It's odd. That she's like I her. said, if she's this hard to contact during a time like this, she's either dead or missing for a reason. So I can't imagine this is going to be particularly pain free. I just don't understand why she'd have reason to trust us. I mean, with her position. She doesn't. Well, yeah, it's I don't think she'd take kindly to being ordered around by us. If I imagine the point is if we're expecting this to be willing, we explained to her that we were sent by as Damien. envoys for the sheriff, who is her boss. Yeah. And then hopefully that will be enough to persuade her considering the fireworks. But like I said, if she's hiding, there's a reason. Callum, I imagine you didn't hear anything prior to tonight about any, not anything, anything about this. And I would like to try the persuasion route first. <laughs> also, I'm going to make a call back to the restaurant, tell everybody to shut everything down, hand out gift cards, everybody go home. And when you call the restaurant, uh, they're real glad that you called because after it started, everybody started to panic and trying to want to leave. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Mr. McFarland. Uh, I'll make sure that Everyone gets home safe. You stay safe too, boss. If anybody has any questions or anything, just tell them it's a gas leak. Well, I, we've had people come in talking about what's on the news already. So, yeah, I'll make sure that everybody gets home safe. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't think we have much of another option besides persuasion. I mean, from what I know, none of us are exactly as skilled as she is in as far as combat. Just oh, a, she still just, has just a moment to the court. Just a moment. She calls on to her automated system in her dash and she's like, send text to Alex. I'm safe. I'm fine. Got something to do. Be home soon. Cat. Sorry. Needed to send word. It wasn't I work. Admit, I don't know. I mean, I don't know much about the court of the city. Is this kind of thing to be expected? The, Which part? The explosions? The lack of subtlety. It depends on who's playing the game. Very true. If anything, this is potentially an indicator of. Who's vying for Praxis? But. Who knows, maybe those Sabat have finally grown a pair of testicles worth their oh, no. if reputation. It, if it was Sabat, you would see them crawling in the streets. If they're going to make that much noise, they're going to come in force. Been there, done that. And as you're getting closer to the Memorial Hospital, you begin to start to encounter roadblocks. Hardened off streets. She shows her doctor ID. Uh, Ma'am, uh, there's nothing left for you to go to at the hospital. It's rubble. Uh, you, you're going to have to turn your vehicle. And if you're going trying to get through, you have to go about a block and then down and go around. Uh, we've got this cordoned off for, for two blocks around the place. It's a crime scene right now. And Understood. rescue efforts in the rubble. Understood. Will not interfere. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Move along, please. She goes the detour to get around the backside of the hospital, basically close close as we can. To. You can get about two blocks. They've got it mm -hmm. blocked two blocks in all directions. Mm -hmm. As close yeah. as you're going to get a vehicle. This is as close as we're going to get. If, Dr. Rakosi, uh, if you need me to, I can be persuasive if it comes to that. I, don't, I, I understand why you said what you said and why we shouldn't make waves, but if we encounter, if we really are desperate, I can 
She looks at Andy and says, try a ritual here. If she survived, she snuck out. Uh, and yeah, Andy will pull out the white ribbon, uh, take the small dagger, little piece of blood, soak the ribbon, light it on fire. Okay, so the very first roll you've got to make is going to be mm -hmm. uh, blood sorcery and intelligence. Blood sorcery and intelligence. Yep. That's five. Let's see, it's a ritual level two, so it's difficulty three. You get a margin of two. Uh, now you have intelligence survival against, uh, because you have a margin of two, against difficulty four. As you all see him soak this ribbon and try to light it on fire. As he's concentrating. He got four successes. As he takes the, the light, the lighter to the ribbon, it catches fire and slowly burns. Now for you, Andy, you know that means the ritual is a success. Though where the car is now, you don't see a trail. She didn't come this way. Oh, Katarina will start going around the two block circle around the hospital until he picks up something. So as you're going around the circle. Mm -hmm. She will not interfere with their investigation area. You find a spot, Andy, where you see the trail coming out from the where the hospital was down the street. It is a greenish and I, tinge. And I can tell the direction as in. Uh, you can see the strength of it. Okay. You can tell which way is slightly brighter than the other because you've got enough open area to see. And it's brighter heading away. Heading away. Yep. Okay. Uh, he'll point the direction. Uh, I'm assuming Katarina's driving. Yes. Give me directions. Yeah, yeah, he'll he'll point in the direction he sees it. Okay, she goes in that direction. And as you're going in that direction, you go one block, two blocks, three blocks. And then you see the trail, Andy, drop down into a sewer hole or sewer uh, grate. Stop, stop, stop. Mm. She went Cat down. Cat does and pulls over to a parking area. Fucking hell. Of course she went through the sewers. <sighs> Desperate times. Well, uh, while this is happening, I would like to use premonition to see if I get some some feelings about what's going on. I was going to ask the same thing. Oh, both of you want to do a premonition. <laughs> okay. I'm going to love this uh, coterie right here because I love me some premonitioning. Resolve all specs from both of you. Fuck it. I'm going to do it too. Okay, resolve all specs. Shanky, just in general, I'm keeping my eye out for a particular rat. Okay. Uh, Gwen will go ahead and uh, activate Eyes of the Beast just so she can... So you can see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what we got for some, some resolve all specs here. Let's see. We got one from Bo. I got four Andy, total. Four after willpowering. Four from Rashad. Interesting. For you, Bo. As you try to I see what you can pull, what you can sense from what's going on. With only one success. Things are in flux tonight. You can see it in your vision. There's a scale teetering between the weights on them. You have no idea what it means or where it's going to go. For Andy, as you push your vision out to look into the what may happen, you see a darkness spreading in all directions. From that darkness, the earth itself 
is pushing against it. And the earth moves almost like a wave, like it crashes against the shore. Until one big wave, pure earth, smashes against everything, obliterating it. For Rashad, your vision. You see a city wreathed in flames. And as it burns, you see birds of some kind flying from one part of the burning city to the other, almost without direction. First they fly this way, then they fly that way, then they fly back. And you notice that while the birds are doing that, there is something hunting them, something following them that the birds don't see, that they don't realize. Something very old and very powerful. And even in your vision, you know you can't warn them. And as the vision unfolds, you see birds falling from the sky, caught by this ancient power. And then your vision also returns. Now, for everybody who didn't have a vision, you see Andy, Rashad, and Bo's eyes kind of go unfocused as they're unblinking and unmoving and just sitting there as they're caught in the visions that they've seen. The hell is he every one of them a psychic medium? Apparently. Have anything <laughs> interesting to share, fellas? <laughs> uh, nothing really. I use it mostly when I'm at the tables, but... Uh... Didn't get anything quite helpful now. Something is hunting. Mm. Hunting who? Something. I don't know. All of us. Everyone in the city. Fantastic. We should be careful. I agree. Keep your eyes open. Hey, Andy's agreeable. I uh, think we should listen. Andy, are you not going to tell us what you saw, though? Some while it lasted. Not so agreeable, it seems. Andy will pull the top of the, or the manhole cover and head down. As you head into the sewer. Anyone bringing anything special into the sewer? I assume cell phones, because you're going to need the lights from them anyway to see. For you, Bo, as a Toreador, it's not a pleasant experience being in a sewer. Is it uh, player competence or character competence or whatever? Um, would it be reasonable that in um, his bag he would have like a small like pen light or like pocket flashlight sure i know yeah. katarina would have one as a doctor she's got you oh know, yeah oh, she's yeah. got them too yeah yeah um i am going to get a steak out of the back when we'll do the same i mean cat kind of has some weaponry and shit stashed under the the floor of the back of the suburban because she never knows when she's gonna run into a fucking enemy <laughs> I think you it's clear. A pair of elderwood steaks. Yeah. And um, I'm also going to do a little bit of vicissitude to boost myself up. Okay. As we are working our way through the sewers. So, how this works first, you got to roll Resolve and Protean after you do a rouse check, of course. Mm -hmm, I'm going to rouse. Uh, for those that uh, did premonition, don't forget to do your rouse checks. I and see Rashad. I get a little hungry. Yep. <laughs> and Katarina's beast speaks in her head. You know he's coming for you. And she says in her head, Oh, it, can it be him? Please let it be him. You hope to win this time. You're <laughs> going to need my help. That's why you're here, isn't it? 
So you're going to roll. <laughs> Resolve Protean. Now, sir, you're aware I s won't always do everyone's beast when a bunch of failures happen because I've learned the hard way. That's pain in the ass to do everyone. But I randomly select people who fail rolls to uh, give their beasts commentary. Let's see how she does uh, with a Resolve Protean. Four. Uh, that lets you do, uh, if you want. Uh, that's more than you have dots and protean, so you don't really need a willpower. Okay. Uh, you can do three because you can make up to your <clears throat> protean level. Now, for each change, it costs you one of your physical attributes. Okay. So, what are you going, what are you trying to shape, change, shape yourself into? I actually am wanting to increase my density but also my speed my response so you so can't just do you can't actually do both because you've only got if you're going to do dex and stamina up that would be two dots to move you only have one to get rid of at, by pulling from strength so you could increase one of the two by pulling a dot from strength there is a minimum you can't go below two i don't think you can't go i thought no, below, one. below one one no attribute okay, can be sorry. taken below one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So to pull an attribute, you can pull one dot from strength temporarily and move that dot somewhere else. Okay. Okay. So that's one of them. I will increase my stamina. So uh, you've increased, in this particular case, you're increasing the density of your body. Uh, but since you're not used to that kind of weight, uh, it's a lot harder to move the muscles and to move with it. So your strength is a bit weaker dealing with the extra mass that you've added, which by doing so, it also increases your health an extra dot. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd have to pull from stamina or dexterity at this point to do something else. Not sure you want to do that. I don't. Okay. So that's all so you get for now. That's fine. Um, I will do that. So you all see her kneading and shifting. Essentially, she's shifting body mass, moving it through her body to other places. Her arms look a little thinner. Her legs look a little thinner as she's bulking up. Shoulders, core. Yep. Yeah. Andy watches in a mix of fascination and disgust. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't have to slap my Vitae around to get shit done. For everyone here, I don't think anyone here has had experience watching. <laughs> A flesh crafter move their flesh. It's not an easy process. She is forcing the muscle. Mm -hmm. And it looks painful. But Kendrick. And she kind of stretches her neck a little bit when she's done. She's like, all right, let's go. I'll I'll uh, walk up behind Bo and uh, hand him a holster that has a handgun and a stake in it. I, I'm I'm not so much for guns. I have my my knives here but i will take the stake if that's all right uh andy will actually hold his hand out uh towards the the um uh, towards Bo is like if you don't mind mr mcfarlane was it yes sir uh i might find some use with the firearm all right i'll i'll hand that to you um, and so, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, so I will also. I already have eyes the beast up, but I, um, would also probably like to do unseen passage. Do I have to do silence of death too with that, or am I automatically no. silent? No, you're not automatically silenced though. You're just uh, silent. Silence of death. Uh, thankfully, he's free, so you don't have to spend any. Yeah, you so I, 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 I'll do both then. <laughs> yep. Now, a, okay. a reminder to the viewers and to the players how I deal with obfuscate. Um, when she's obfuscating, she's not actually invisible. It's convincing mentally through her own vampiric powers that she's not there. So when anyone uses obfuscate, uh, they can let their coterie know that they're there by touching him. And because that reveals them, uh, their coterie will still be able to see the one who's obfuscated, but anyone they encounter doesn't until something is done to suggest there's somebody there. Wynn's well, um, going to go ahead and let them all know. Quick tap. So and by then, tapping, uh, you can all see that she's there and know she's with you. 
storyteller um with heightened senses does that heighten all senses or am i able to pick and choose you can pick and choose could i use heightened senses for sight and hearing yes i definitely don't want it for smell right now <laughs> probably a good idea we'll look back uh, Rashad would draw a knife and get ready to go down once andy gets down here i want to throw up uh sense the unseen okay and as you're heading into this rather rank smelling sewer i will turn on eyes of the beast and you begin to move down it following the trail as it, it's heading northward through the city Bo, you have your heightened senses on uh, Gwen also had a hell of a or had a hell of a role. I think it was was it Gwen? Let me look back here at the wits awareness. Yes, with five. Bo had four with heightened senses. Now, as you're but moving also, through, you've been walking ten minutes, following this trail, bypassing side openings, side tunnels. But Bo and Gwen, you begin to hear. A splashing behind you of somebody moving through the sewer. You're being followed. Gwen will point to alert the others. Bo would nod in agreement, confirming. Katarina I... turns back and she does have eyes of the beast up so she can see in the dark. You don't see anything right now. But after it's been pointed out and everybody stops moving, you can hear it's not running. Slow measured paces moving up. No hint of light. You don't even see anybody. Since the unseen. Give me a resolve all specs roll. Yeah, I'm going to do that, too, because yep. I've got mine up. Resolve all specs. And what is the but to add a dice to that? Uh, you hit the uh, plus, the plus at the bottom. If you're surging, uh, you actually hit the surge button on your character sheet, and it'll do the surge automatically. Andy got five with a crit. Nice. Two. And a willpower. Rashad. Man, episode one, everybody's burning willpower. Look at that. I love it. Oops, I did that wrong. Let's see what you get. If you hit the willpower and it won't let you, just roll the number of dice you need to willpower, because otherwise it does weird things. Oh. It only added one. That's fine. Andy with the crit. There's a man. Coming up the hallway. Blue jeans. Wearing black t-shirt. Kind of looks somewhat rat-like in the face. Coming up the tunnel towards you. Andy will point the firearm in its direction stop whoa 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 and with that he becomes visible oh yeah <laughs> oh whoa, whoa 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 what do we got down here we're on business for damien oh you are in the sewers huh tracking someone mm. mind telling me who you're tracking Someone the, the sheriff wants us to. Hey. Do I recognize this NOS? You've not seen this one? Okay. I'm going to, uh, let me introduce myself, hey, everybody. My name's Nick. Hmm. You know. You can just call me Nick. That's what everybody calls me. I was just curious, all the shit going on in this city, why some people are running around our sewers. 
just probably going from point A to point B underground. Look it's like almost there's group. like a lot of eyes active up uh, above ground. Wow. Seems below ground would be the way to move. You're a smart one. Yeah. And who are you? <laughs> Not your concern right now. Mm, I'm <laughs> sorry to explain this to you that uh, you're in the sewers of Chicago. These are Clan Nosferatu's rules. And this is our our domain. We own this. Now. I'm Katarina hey. Ricosi. You can vouch me with Martin and Adzi. I see. There's names I know. Who I am is not important. I'm here on business from the sheriff who reports to the prince. So your name's Bucko. Who... Okay, Bucko. <laughs> So we got Bucko, Katarina. I see sweet cheeks down there. And he points at you, Rashad. Hey, thank you for the compliment. Rashad of the Giovanni. Look, if you run into a guy, Lamar, don't tell him I called you sweet cheeks because that's kind of my nickname for him. You get upset about that. You have my word. Okay, good, 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 good. Just make sure. I just, you know, you're patrolling. Actually, kind of. Yeah. Damien sent us to track down Alexa. Oh, oh shit. Okay, wait a minute now. This is fun. Uh, Alexa, you say? Yeah, have you seen her? No, I haven't seen her. Well, she came through this way, and that's where we're going, and we don't want to lose the trail. Curious he's sending you, huh? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I know why. Hmm. I've heard some things about her, but I'm not going to, it's not my position to tell. That's, that, that's Cedric's thing, not mine. But it's okay. It's all good. Just make sure. We have no intention of disturbing anything Nosferatu hold down here. We are just passing through. Tell you what, Honest. you run into anyone else down here that my clan. Tell them Rocky beats Natasha. Uh, they'll know that I gave you the all clear. Will do. If they don't give you the all clear, they're not one of our side. Got it. Um, Gwen, so Gwen will speak up. Uh, and will be like kind of like meekish because I mean like, well, it's Gwen. She's young and she's small. Um, and she is going to ask, like, could you... Could you tell us more about Alexa? What do you and I want to use uh, the first dot on my lore sheet. Trust me. Oh, look at that. Breaking out the lore sheet in episode one. I like it. I like it. Let's see what you got here. Trust me. Uh, let's see what that lets you do. Uh, you show vulnerability. Yeah, but it's necessary. I see what you're doing. We'll get them to tell the truth is lowered by one. So go ahead and give me. Uh, you're trying to get him to to give you information he may not want. Let's go with persuasion and uh, it's not, well, you could go manipulation or charisma. I'll let you use either one. While she's doing that, Bo, trying to distract himself from the fun sewer that they're in, just whispers to Callum, I wonder why they didn't reference Bullwinkle or Boris with that passcode. Would insight not work sure. as well? I'll let you use insight. Okay. With detect lies. Okay. Yeah, let's use that. Go ahead. I don't like that grin, Shanky. That grin makes me nervous. Don't be nervous. That feeling is self-preservation. Never be nervous. I'm a good person. Nick is a great guy. Shanky, is it possible to help a fellow Coterie mate? Not with something like this, no. Okay. I am willpowering that. Four so far, not bad. Five. You know. I'm not normally a sucker for a pretty lady. That's not normally my thing, but I tell you what. It's not really a secret. Our good old Scourge. She's a bit of a shadow dancer. I know that's not normal for a Malkavian, but... 
Uh, she's dabbled a bit in some somber blood at some point. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> she's also a bloody psychopath. Hmm. Hopefully she's in a good mood tonight. Otherwise, well, it's nice meeting you. Nice knowing you. <laughs> Nick, any chance of uh, you coming along for a bit? Since you were following us anyway. Well, actually, I was. Y'all just happened to be heading the same direction I am. Hmm. I got to get. The streets are a bit too much. I got to get uh, at, to the edge of the city. And then take a trip. Because I've actually got to go get Martin. Cedric wants me to grab him, bring him back into the city. He's out of this place outside of town, so I've got to go drag his ass in here. Give him my regards when you see him. Yeah, I got to go in that goddamn church that he lives in. Mm. All them damn cat statues that he puts into place <laughs> drives me fucking nuts. <laughs> I know I don't have an allergy to cats, but I used to, and it still just bugs me. <laughs> but, hey, you know, Primogen, Cedric wants me to do it. I could do it. It's better than what Waneka wanted me to do. He's got his damn roving bands out there running around. Hmm. You all be careful with that shit. Roving bands. Yeah, Tent City's empty tonight. Oh, he's mobilized his army. Fantastic. Uh, oops. Have you seen anything else? Anything strange? Blown up buildings? Yeah, I saw that. I see something flying around in the air. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, damn, what else have I seen tonight? Uh, fucking ATF in town. FBI in town. DEA running around. Oh, shit. I even saw down by the police precinct. I swear to God, she must only be about 17 wearing an FBI jacket. Fucking running. The fucking investigation there. The youngest goddamn FBI agent I've ever seen. Strange things. That's, that's, I mean, come on. Something flying in the air? Yeah, it's probably some damn gangrel. Oh. That's what they do, right? Hell, matter of fact, hell, it, no, it probably wouldn't have been dread because I heard he's riding around with a bunch of fucking Hell's Angels tonight. So, they probably one of them damn gangrels. Mm. You know who blew up the buildings? I see that's an important thing. Um, a fool who thinks he can run this city. Hell. Rumor has it. It's loading. He's come back. Of course he has. That's what the rumor says. Seems like something he might do from what I've heard. Eh, you know. I don't know if I believe lo the, the rumors. I mean, that motherfucker's dead, right? At least that's what they say. But you know, I got a comment about that too. A lot of us are dead. But that don't mean we stay dead now, does it? <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time somebody said I was dead, I'd have $23.62. It seems like you're lowballing yourself. Nah, nah, a lot of people don't say I'm dead. They wish I'm dead, but not say I'm dead. It's different. Well, I got to get moving. I got a job to do. So do we. And we're still going the same direction. Uh, for about another three passages, then I'm taking a left. I don't know where you're going. If you're taking a left, then cool. We're still going the same direction. But I got about three more up. Take a left. You learn this place after a while. I'm just following the Moody Tremere, so he can tell you where we're going. Bucko's a Tremere. Fuck. Of course he is. And circle gets the square. 
Jesus. Fucking Tremere. Jesus. <laughs> Was that a Hollywood Squares reference? Who watches Hollywood Squares anymore? <sighs> oh, okay, I'm gonna. Him. I'm not even gonna. Y'all can have the Tremere. Y'all take that shit. I don't want that. <sighs> and he sets back off on down the damn corridor. And we going the same way you are for about three passages, and he takes a left, and you all are going straight. I am going to bring up Unseen Passage again, if I can. Okay, you can. Ral's junk. The longer they're in here, the more okay. uncomfortable you can tell Bo is. Mm-hmm. It's starting to get a little antsier. I imagine at some point uh, Andy notices and just tells him to calm down, Princess. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel the need to be this insufferable or is it something from your blood oh shit <laughs> no no sometimes it does feel like it comes natural oh Rashad, Rashad no need for that his mouth is going to get him in trouble there's nothing I need to do that is going to do any more damage than he's going to do to himself <laughs> And as you're following this, follow it for about another 20 minutes before you see the trail going up a ladder. Uh, you haven't passed the and storm drain lately. You're pretty sure it's not going up into the street. And here we ascend. And as you head up the ladder, you end up in a warehouse. I need a new wits awareness from everybody real quick, just to see if you notice something. Would I get to add anything with the heightened senses to that? Yes. Uh, I'll take that into account with the difficulty. Do I get to okay. add anything with eyes of the beast? Sure. I'll take that into account with the difficulty. Since the unseen won't help. Does my specialty in ambushes apply? Oh, sure. Not that I planned an ambush, but sure. Five. Nope, you added uh, this. You added all specs to it. You don't need to add all specs to it there, uh, Bo. Oh, um, I, I just take it still... into account. Let's see, Gwen. No, no, uh, I, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't know why that was. It was still checked from before. Four, Katarina. Oh, you want me to, would you like me to re-roll? Yes, please. Not bad. It's an interesting roll. Still got five. Damn. Nice roll. As you're going up, we got a five. That's the highest. We got a four from Katarina. Gwen ended up with a four. So Gwen, Katarina, and Bo. As you climb up in there, you come up into this warehouse, and the first thing you notice, uh, there's an African-American man. He's wearing a very dark purple suit with a red tie. You only catch a bare glimpse of him as he's stepping out the door, leaving the place. Broad-shouldered. His movements are very precise, though. And the trail that you're following, Andy, uh, leads over to an office. With no windows, it's obviously an office, though, because it says on it manager of this warehouse. But when you all step up in there and start moving towards the office door following this trail, the entire place goes black. I black as night. Beast. <laughs> right here, everybody. We're going to break. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all get to find out what happened. Well, you know what happened. But we'll see everybody in 10 minutes. Enjoy the break, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, before the break, a group of kindred that most of them at least knew of each other and one outsider to the group was sent on a mission by Damien, a mission to go and fetch Alexa, the scourge of the city. Now, after a trip through the sewers where they got to meet the infamous Nick, though none of these people knew who he was yet. They've arrived in a warehouse 
where they just caught a well-dressed gentleman leaving. And then they were caught in a field of darkness, a field of darkness that as it gets spread through the area, you can feel the cold of death. This is an unnatural cold. This is the cold of the grave itself well, as it you- envelops everyone in the room. Now, I know Katerina mm-hmm. has eyes of the beast. Gwen has eyes of the beast. For those with heightened senses, you can see a little of maybe a foot in front of you. That's about it. And even that is barely able to be seen. But for eyes of the beast, there's a haze to the room, but you can still see through it. Good. Do I see any movement? Well, the office door opens. Can Andy see the trail still? No. It's obscured in the blackness. Do I hear, like with heightened senses in my hearing, do I hear any other movement around us from no, besides that direction? Fact, everything seems muted. Dampened. Dulled. Sound okay. isn't traveling like it should. The air doesn't feel right. If you were still breathing, you have a feeling you'd be having trouble breathing because the air almost feels too thin here. Uh, Since Andy has no other recourse at this moment, he's just going to yell, we're just here to deliver a message. And for Katerina and Gwen, a woman steps out, long blonde hair. (laughs) She's wearing leather jacket adorned with little skull pins on it pair of leather pants she steps out for those of you most of you have at least seen alexa once in elysia it's alexa santos who steps out so what if we hear just real quick is she now visible to everybody no, or is she's Andy in the still field com- is still there but okay. Kat and Gwen, Kat and Gwen can see her. Everybody and, else. And Kat looks dead or, right in her eyes, and she can see Kat's eyes glowing. And says, "Damien sent us. He wants to see you." And with the way the sound is muted, it's hard for everyone. Uh, other Gwen and Katarina can see where she is, but the sound—it's hard to place even a direction. It is a very odd sensation to be in. But her laugh. Even in the muted sound, carries through. Damien sent you. Yeah. Isn't it funny? And Cat starts laughing. So, that's funny as for sure. He sent you to die. Really? Oh, yes. He knows I'm not coming back to him. I've made my choice. Hmm. And it's at this point... In the shadows, you all hear a very deep, rumbly laugh. (laughs) And that seems to get her attention because her head suddenly starts swiveling around looking. Seems we're not the only ones Damien sent. And for Gwen and Katarina. And I turn and look. Another door opens. One that leads outside, not the one that the, the, the man in the purple suit left. The one on the other side of the building, it opens. Four gentlemen step in. One in an immaculate suit. Man, you all recognize. The court warlock has entered the room. Victor. The other three are the men that always seem to travel with him. as they flank him as they come into the room. But with that laugh, Alexa, once she notices who comes in, now at least it'll be a challenge for me. And then that laugh comes out again. It's a deep, guttural, bass-filled laugh. of <laughs> and For Gwen and Katarina, the stone behind Alexa is moving. The concrete floor is shifting. I don't say shit. (laughs) It looks like a floor. But then a head comes out of it. And wings. Very muscular, broad arms. Tipped in claws. Something you have never seen, any of you. 
Gwen and Katarina. Creature made of stone. Almost looks like he should be perched on top of a gothic church. Has come out of the concrete behind her without a sound. And he's just lurking there, hunched, grinning with a grin that is. Actually, it's very unsettling. It's the grin of a predator. And the one who identified himself as Victor speaks out first. Come, dear. Let's not make this messy. And Alexa laughs at him. And you see Victor look to one of his, the guys next to him. Do it. And the man pulls something out of his pocket and throws it into the sphere of darkness. And there's a blinding light as the darkness is destroyed. And there's a stone in the center of the room so bright that all the shadows are gone. Now the rest of you see this creature crouched behind Alexa. She hasn't noticed it yet. Grinning. Well, I would like to thank you all for helping me. Well, well, wait a minute. Hello, Andy. Who is saying this? Is it Victor? Victor? Hello, Sir Victor. Andy Sawyer, child of Abraham du Sable, child of a traitor, child of one who turned his back on the chantry, child of one who allowed. Toreador to defile our sacred chantry. Very fortunate you're here. And Alexa, shocked by the light that dispelled her darkness for some reason, turns to try to use the distraction to flee. And as she turns, she bumps into this creature who, with one hand, just picks her up by the throat and just holds her up, grinning. Oh, I will deal with you in a second, Andy. Alexa, my dear, I'd like you to meet a gargoyle. And the gargoyle, she can call me Dave. I think we've got this handled from here, but... Andy, you're going to come over here and... To see me. Me and you need to have a brief talk. And why on earth would I want to do that? I don't care with if you your want it or not. Grotesque little friend. Well, I can have Dave there pull your arms off. Hell, I can have him pull your legs off and beat you with him. And Dave laughs again. <laughs> Some of you may have heard of a gargoyle. Uh, trust me, they're not all gone. This one, he's a friend. And you hear Dave, not of you, Dick. Doesn't matter who he's friend of. I imagine which is worse, the parts or the whole. And Victor actually starts to walk over to you. Now, everyone here, uh, you've seen a killer walk before. Victor's movements now are not what you've seen in court. Victor's movements now are of someone supremely confident in their ability to kill people without hesitation as he's approaching Andy. You all are just lucky that I got here in time. Uh, Dave's been following you all the whole night. We've been following Dave. Dave follows you. See, Alexa would have never revealed herself if I showed up. But you all, you all can show up. I'm just disappointed we got here so quick. I figured we'd get here and 
half of you'd be dead. Hell, even Jackson figured four of you would be gone by the time I got here. Hey, Dave, you want some real sport? Let her go. <laughs> no, Dave. We have our orders from the prince. She gets brought to his presence. Now, as for you, Andy, hope you all don't like him much. I'm afraid Andy's not leaving this warehouse. Now, why is that? And as Victor's getting closer, because I'm going to kill him. Mm. His life, like his sire's, is forfeit. Really? Oh, yes. And at this point, Andy, he has gotten within three feet of you, and he's just standing there looking at you. <laughs> so, how do we want to do this? Are you going to just stand there and let me kill you? Or are you going to take a shot at me? Or it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to kill you either way. And if I don't, one of them three will. And if they don't, Dave will. And Cat looks over his shoulder at the other three, just assessing them. They're all big guys, but their posture tells you. Though they look casual, they're not. They're all three ready to. Strike at once. Big Garris. What? You figure? need backup. Oh, no, I'm going to kill you alone. Uh, they're here to witness. If your friends get involved, I'll kill them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you laugh. I do, because you think you're so high and mighty and better than everyone else, and you're just like your enemies. No. Oh, I am better. Do you know why I'm better? Mm hmm Because I can do it if I want. Mm-hmm. Just like your enemies do. Mm. Well, let's see. And he takes Seems another step know. closer to Andy. Seems we know who the real traitor to the pyramid is. Oh, no. These. Where it's not my decision. Your death is on the direction of Justicar Carfax. Your death is with permission from Pontifex Ulmer. I just get to be the hand of retribution. I, I think once Andy sort of realizes that it's a from on high, because I, I, I imagine Andy might not be as aware of everything that Abraham was doing that once he starts bringing up like how high up the pyramid it goes and he sort of instinctually starts like backing away from him and actually moves to raise the gun towards him and he he steps closer and his hand is dipped into his jacket and what he pulls out so oh, as soon as his hand goes into his jacket, Andy will start firing because he knows what that means. Okay, go ahead. Give me a dex uh, uh, firearms roll. Those of you with heightened senses hearing on might want to turn it off because that gunshot going to be loud. Yeah, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's pretty good. <laughs> three dice, five successes on three dice. Why that the fuck is could Nicholas be this good with guns? <laughs> now, here's the sad thing. I got seven with a crit. So as you bring the gun up to fire, he moves. You can tell it's, he doesn't even think about it. It's instinctual. As he ducks under the gun and his hand comes out and what he pulls out of his pocket is about a two foot long sharpened piece of wood. which he slams into your chest. Now, all of you have seen a kindred stake before, but the oddest fucking thing happens. As you're standing there and you see this stake go in, Andy doesn't appear like what you'd expect. Andy begins 
goes slack. Then the color drains from him. Then skin shrinks down, peels back. And what you're left with is a corpse about two years old. As Andy is destroyed. Got to find my thing to fix that. Cat looks at Victor and says, well, that was anticlimactic. Oh, <laughs> did you do that? I didn't know that would happen. That's an odd thing. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I guess shit happens. Are we free to go? You are to report back as instructed. Dave. Carry Miss Santos with you, please. And you see Alexa get a grin on her face. Because though she has no shadows to escape through here, she seems to be thinking the moment she gets out of this building where the light isn't lighting up the sky, she can shadow step away. But it's not going to help her. Because while Dave's got her about her neck, he rams a piece of wood into her chest. <laughs> Victor looks at you all. Please, do fly away now. Fly, fly, fly. Leave. My business is concluded. And as Cat and everybody's walking out, God, he's so compensating. Now, remember, <laughs> you all, your car is not anywhere near here. Mm -mm. Yeah, are we, are we going to go back the way we came? I would not advise it. You don't have the path to follow in the sewers. You might no. want to take the... We're going to... Uh, Cat will take out her phone and call a fucking Uber. Okay. You might want to call one for six people. Or, sorry, I, five people. I put down how many people are riding. Yes. Uber black. <laughs> are Ubers running in uh, Chicago right now? Mm. If not, she'll call a fucking... You can get a taxi, though. Taxi. Large parts of the city you're going to have trouble getting to. And as you wait, Victor goes out and you see him get into a Mercedes that's parked out from the door he came in as Dave takes this stiff body and flies into the air with it. And Victor still has that same arrogant grin on his face as he looks you over one more time as he's getting into the vehicle. I'd give you a ride, but no room. She flips him off. <laughs> and he laughs as he gets in his vehicle and they drive off. And I leave this. You all can have a discussion while you're waiting on the taxi because you don't want to have this discussion in the taxi about what happened. Masquerade. I think this is what I saw earlier. Hmm. I don't know. Wait, better than I thought. I was going to say the same thing, Rashad. I don't take a lot of pleasure, though, being right that his mouth ultimately did him in. I don't think it was his mouth so much as his lineage. Based on what Victor was yeah. saying. No, Victor was hoping all of us Didn't would know. have been ended. Asshole. Have you all seen that creature before? I have not. No. Even read what? of anything like it. I mean, I've read about and been read to by my father when I was younger about gargoyles, but just another thing I'll chalk up to his stories being real. More real than I thought. It's a real shame Alexa's name wasn't Natasha, because in this case, Rocky really would have beaten Natasha. <laughs> you know what the Nosferatu said? Rocky, the gargoyle, rock creature. Come on, people. Sorry. I got it. 
No one else making jokes in a very uncomfortable situation. Just me. Cool. 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 Great. <laughs> I wouldn't call this uncomfortable. Yeah, we're fine. We're all around still. For now. We haven't done anything wrong. No, you heard what he said. Much. You heard what he said, though, that there was an expectation that half of us would probably be dead. So our lives mean shit right now. I mean, that's for sure, but does it mean they're going to actively kill us? If we're inconvenient, Don't be we've inconvenient. seen things. That's where it really comes into play. I'm going to step to the side and give Mr. Sovereign a call. Ah, tell him. I'm rather busy tonight. What can I do for you? Uh, I'm going to give him the short version of everything that happened. Hmm. I don't like to say this, but I think, boy, you're fucked. Well, I was also hoping you could help with that. I will see what I can do. We could use a car for six and maybe a ride to uh, one of the smaller county airports. No, I'm afraid it's in your best interest to see this through. You do not want to flee under this cases. With given what is going on, it could be interpreted as you are working for the enemy. And it could lead to a blood hunt. I would advise you follow the prince's command. Very well. I will speak in your behalf. Thank you, sir. And then the line goes dead. I could have at least could asked if that was what we wanted first. Exactly. Just lining I up have a things I can't just up and leave behind. Just lining up a contingency. I appreciate the thought, Mr. McFarlane. The city's already taken everything from me for the most part. Honestly, it might be faster if we just started walking. A taxi pulls up. It's gonna be tight, but you can no, get in. It's a taxi van. Yeah. Okay. Still a little tight. Y'all can get in. Five of y'all. Somebody setting up front with the taxi driver. It'll be cat. <laughs> and I know you're not gonna have much of a talk in the taxi because not at all, mortal. And as you arrive at the Met, the, the museum, the Met there, where well, you came the first time. No, should we go back to her car? Well, to her car and into the. Okay, I'll turn it over to you to talk in the car as you're going to the Met. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, do we have any thoughts? Oh, no, it's a complete Seems. setup. It was a complete setup. We were sacrificial. They give no fucks about us whatsoever. And it doesn't matter who you're related to. And she looks at Callum. And looks at Bo. We are completely expendable assets to them. I was always expendable. Kat, you were with your history. I mean, you've known that this is kind of how it works. Oh, I get it. I get it. That's why I was just going to make damn sure I survived tonight. I was trying to make sure that all of us had a way out. While I get what you were thinking, don't ever presume to make decisions for me. Like I said, the decision wasn't going to be made. It was just going to be a contingency. I... We will see this through. We will go back to where we were told to report. 
I imagine that fucking thing is taking her there. Knowing that the prince sent the fucking warlock, the prince will be there. Where would you have wanted to go, even, Callum? Well, that would have been a discussion after our ride arrived. No place that interests where we you? Where wanted to go. I mean, I could set up a restaurant anywhere. There are still some things about tonight that aren't quite adding up. So I have some things I'd like to learn. But after that, I suppose I wouldn't mind joining you if you do decide to leave, Gal. Well, if we're walking into the wolf's den, let's walk in together at least. I got a lead on something in Kansas City. What's that? Right. Got a rumor my brother's there. Hmm. And well, <laughs> I need to wrap up that loose end. Mm -hmm. No one fights like there. family. Go ahead. You can finish what you're saying, Rashad. Sorry. He said no one fights oh, that like was family. A, that was all. <laughs> you're pulling up to the Met before you come and it was dark, but now it's lit. And at the door, it's two of Damien's hounds. And as you're approaching it, it's not Bobby, it's one of the other ones. You're to go inside. Don't hang in the entrance. And go all the way back. You'll see who's waiting for you. I already know. And she walks in. And as you go in, Bobby's waiting at the hallway that leads out of the atrium park. And as you walk past him, he files in behind you. As you move to the back, you come into an art exhibit. One that shows the Battle of Dearborn. Right here, where Chicago was built. Do I see any kindred iconography in this painting? Ooh, give me, ooh, ooh, mm -hmm. shit. Give me, my, uh, let's see what you sheep. can roll for this one, because this one's a, mm, uh, give me a wits. Uh, mm, fuck it, let's make it easy. Wits awareness. Give me wits awareness. Oh, nice. Crit six. There is staring at it. You realize that in one corner of the painting, based on the way the figures are drawn, if looked at the right angle, someone has painted a Toreador rose hidden amongst the figures. And as you're standing there, a man walks into the room, a man you all recognize. Prince Jackson has entered. With him, Damien, his hound Bobby, Kathy, two other hounds. Well, Bobby was behind you the whole time. A woman you don't recognize directly. Half of her face is, looks burnt and scarred. Nosferatu, obviously, but with him. And a Nosferatu you've all seen before at various points, rarely, only when you went to visit him. Winneka has come out of Tent City tonight and is standing near Jackson. And as soon as you come in, Jackson looks over at Damien. Okay, you win. I'll give you the, you can have the penthouse. 
And Damien just looks back, told you. You're down only one. Glad we got you something, Damien. Damien doesn't speak. Not to you yet. And Jackson looks you over, so you're down one. Yeah, Victor had a grudge with Andy and decided to stake him. And the funniest thing happened, don't let him gas you up on this. The funniest thing happened when Victor staked him, Andy just up and died. Victor did it, you say? Yeah. Did he give a reason? He said it was because he was the child of Abraham du Sable. Oh, fuck him. Hmm. Sorry. Not sorry. You see? Abraham was a bit of a problem. A problem that was dealt with. Just like we would have been if we were Ash. Well, no, no. No, we just don't matter at all. I see. I think you understand how the court works, don't you? Um, yes, you're no different than the Sabbat. Got it. Let me explain something to you. We are at war. Mm -hmm. That little bitch traitor would never have revealed herself if she knew fucking Victor was around. She would have never revealed herself if Damien went looking for her. She'd have never revealed herself if anyone from this court went looking. But a bunch of nobodies? <laughs> She'll reveal herself for that, now won't she? With, with all due respect, pawns still know their pawns in most cases. I am not obligated to tell you a damn thing in my city. No, you're not. Let me explain it to you the easy way. Same reason I don't give a shit that Victor killed your friend. I am at war. I am in a war right now to hold this city. I am at war to hold the Camarilla against a masquerade breacher. Mm -hmm. Victor is connected to the Justicars. Victor has a fucking gargoyle following him around. Let me tell you, the last thing I'm going to do is get on his fucking case of killing a worthless fucking child of Abraham. As for the rest of you, you all aren't worth shit in this war. <laughs> you are expendable. And you see Kathy. She is cutting daggers into Jackson's back <laughs> in between flicking her eyes at Damien. Yeah, I know, Callum. You're child of Melina. So what? I'd have used her. I'll use anyone in this damn city to keep my city. That's how this works. Mm. You got something to say, Zemitsi? Yes, I do. Have fun ruling over the ashes, tyrant. That's how this works. If you don't like it, you and your fucking friends can get the fuck out of my city. Perfect. Already planned Wouldn't it. Wouldn't be the first time Chicago burned down. <laughs> Is that a threat? No, it's history. Yeah, I was here the last time there was a big fire. How do you think Loden fell? Well, you didn't, didn't seem to pull that one off because he's back, right? Not for fucking long, I can tell you that. <laughs> and Kathy steps forward. And she looks at Damien. You knew about this? And Damien just kind of shrugs. She looks at Jackson, looks back at him. After all the shit I did for this city, after all the shit that I've done for both of you, I fucking ta I watched Nero, stuck with that fucking maniac. Had to deal with his fucking cold hands on my body, and this is how you repay me? Kevin just shrugs at her, and Damon goes, it's nothing personal. Bullshit, it's nothing personal. That's my child you fucking put in danger. That's it. I'm out. You can have your hound. You can have the harpy. You can fucking have Nero. I'm out. I'm going to Milwaukee. I'm going to go work for Prince Durand. Bo, you're coming with me. Of course. Um, rest I, the, I looked at, rest I looked of the, at the others. Kiss my ass. Um. And she walks over, puts her arm around Bo, 
and just ignores the fact the prince is sitting there looking pissed at her as she walks out. Way to inspire loyalty. Have a lovely night. And Kat turns to walk and leave. <laughs> you have 48 hours to be the fuck out of my city. Mm. You got that, Zemitsi? She doesn't even acknowledge it as she's walking out. The rest of you? I advise you make yourself scarce in my city. I won't set a deadline, but it's in your best interest to not be here when I remember you. Understand? Follow- Is this what you do to everyone who follows orders? No. Just ones that are... could potentially become a thorn in my side because of not understanding how the politics in this place work. Can't have you going to support Maxwell or fucking Loden, can I? So, I would either kill you or advise you leave. Now, if you want to stay, that's your prerogative. We got a practice war going on. That means I got to be very careful about who I trust and who I allow to live. I know I you understand it, what I'm it, saying. I understand. It just seems like your army's going to get awfully small, awfully fast, but I guess that's why he's here. I've got my army. And Winnek is just sitting there grinning ear to ear beside him. Should I be taking this message to the rest of the family? I'm sure we are both aware that time is running out. So Damien told me you were here. I didn't even know a member of your family was still in the damn city. I would advise you leave before Sovereign finds you. Sovereign seems to be a little upset still about some business deals that your family didn't uphold. Sovereign will receive what he's owed. Well, he's got the money to spare. I don't care what he claims. I wouldn't let him catch you, though. Smarmy little rat. He tends to be petty like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm supposed to be dead right now. And as he turns to walk away, Winneka goes with him. They leave you all there, though Bobby is watching you still from the doorway. Hey, nothing personal. I I wasn't part of that decision, so you know. Y'all got done dirty. By the time this is done, I hardly doubt we'll be the only ones. No. He's a little pissed. He might forget in a few nights. Who knows? Somebody tried to blow him up tonight. He's a little testy after that. Funny how people get upset when you try to blow them up like that. Are we going to try and kill their pals? I mean, I understand their point. It's a war. But, you know, casualties should be calculated. Whether it's worth the loss, you understand? I don't always agree. But hey, I'm a soldier. That's what I'm here for. Uh, Your friend has already left you all, though, so. You need a ride anywhere? Their cars should be there because we all rode separately. He don't know that. He was not in, he was at, not in the building. No, thank you. I can get my cell phone. Okay. Eh, no, you know, I wanted to offer. And he turns and leaves you all. Is Katarina waiting out front or did she just leave totally? She's just leaning against her car. Uh, So as you all step out of the building, you see Katarina there, and I'll give you all one last scene in Chicago before we end the episode. Is Bo already gone? I'm assuming I'm long gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bo, if you you looked back, I I think you said you were going to look at each of us. I would have looked looked back before. (laughs) Call me. (laughs) He would have, like, nodded knowingly. 
people have forgotten things in our absence that is disappointing but in time they'll remember That cocky little shit wouldn't know an asset if it was laid right in his fucking lap. He'd have to maintain assets after all of this for that to even matter. Does make you question who's going to actually win. Oh, it's not like he's going to actually rule. He'll be a puppet for the fucking Justicars. After this mess? Come now. <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a nicer ventru. Well, I do hope to work with you all again soon. You're entertaining. Like I said, I'm heading to Kansas City. I'll be leaving tomorrow night. Got to get the family packed up. I imagine that we've probably at least like kind of heard of the situation in Kansas City a little oh, bit. That's been rumored for a while that the prince has declared uh, the tower is taking Kansas City and he welcomes anyone. He doesn't care who it is, anyone who's willing to help him reclaim the city from the Sabbat. They're welcome. And you know it's a Malkavian who runs the city, no less. One who's been there as a survivor through all of the time the Sabbat controlled it. Cam Loyal Malkavian survived all that. I think I'd rather well, be in a city that knew it had problems and that recognized where the real threats were. Hmm. Instead of jumping at shadows. Well, Mr. McFarlane. Looks like if you intend to leave, you're going to have a bit of a need of some legal assistance to expedite the process. Ian, I have to uh, bring my staff together tomorrow, arrange some things. Perhaps uh, come for lunch or wrap things up. Sounds good. Katarina, if you'd like, I can uh, arrange for transport. I've got it covered. Not my first time running. But thanks. I could at least make sure it's comfortable for us. <laughs> I appreciate it. But I try to keep my family out of all this. Understood. She gets it. If anyone else... Anyone else would like to uh, come by the restaurant tomorrow? We can make some arrangements. I agree that Kansas City maybe holds a possibility of those who still value loyalty, hospitality, etiquette. I'll call the restaurant tomorrow before we head out. Make sure you all have a way to contact me. So when you get there, we can hook up. Very well. And as you all set out into the night to start making arrangements, right here, everybody, we're going to end season one, episode one of our brand new Chronicle, where a group of kindred just found out how the politics of Chicago has always worked. It has always been about not who you are, but what do you offer now? Not what you offer in the future. What do you offer now? But a place like Kansas City, a place newly reclaimed from the Sabbat with a Malkavian who will accept any that will help him reclaim it. That's the place you go if you want to be something else. That's a place to go if you want to escape being thrown away because you're young. And I'd like to thank my players for this very first episode. I'd like to thank Timber Brad for his heroic, but not heroic death. I'd like <laughs> to thank you, the viewers. And I'm going to admit this right now. Timber Brad's death 
was already planned. I do thank him for showing up. Thank you. So just much, to be part Dad. of the story tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I can kill a Tremere, I'll take it. <laughs> and I do apologize to the viewers who didn't realize it was a setup all along. <laughs> That Brad was here to die. So you're aware. Uh, you should have understood he was in the red shirt. Yeah. That was a hint. That's a hint. He's playing a Tremere. Yeah. That's a hint. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a little bit of a cut, but uh, Andy Sawyer is a play on Annie Sawyer from uh, Being Human, who was dead all along. Yes. Annie was the ghost. <laughs> and so you're aware when we did the meet the cast, everything he said about his background and his character, he just made up on the He spot. made it up on the spot. <laughs> I think everyone who helped me keep the secret, because there's a number of people who knew this was going to happen. Please don't spoil it on the Discord until at least give like 48 hours before people, uh, you know, have seen this so that they can uh, react. Uh, I will actually create a thread. Spoiler chat or something. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. But I do thank everyone. And I do thank my players. I'm looking forward to this table. Uh, I'm looking forward to the game that we're going to, uh, the story we're going to tell in Kansas City. Um, Chicago is a rough place for young kindred. Why do you think the last Chronicle in Chicago was not young kindred? It was older kindred who had something to offer. So thank you, everyone. Please join us on our Discord. So you know, the cast you're seeing in this show all came from our Discord. We'd posted a casting call. Uh, for this show, there was audition rounds. Uh, everyone did very well in it, and we picked the cast from that. So not every show needs audition. Some shows, we just see who applies and pick a cast. Just so you all know, I have created a thread in Discord for our KC, a domain divided open chat. There's a thread called season one, episode one, spoiler chat. If you would like to discuss things about this episode openly, that is where you can do so. And those who have not viewed the stream yet will not check that. Hopefully not. <laughs> so you're aware, episode two is going to pick up three months after the events of this night. Three months after them settling in Kansas, a city that the Sabbat used to run, and still claims a good portion of it. A city where, well, they're going to be under constant threat, but with big risks come the big rewards. Hopefully, Bo will be able to convince Kathy to let him come to uh, Kansas as well. Right, Bo? I mean, especially since the thing you just said is one of my convictions. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so you're aware uh, House Will Not would be with us next week or the week after. Uh, so that is why there's a story reason he's gone. But rest assured, you don't see him next week. He will be joining us at this table. My punishment is being stuck in Packer country, apparently, for my character. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's only three months. You'll be okay. Hey, at least Queen Durand is actually not like heaven at all. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And for the fans of the Windy City. Uh, you just saw the events from the other side of our final season, our last couple of episodes. You just saw the other end, the events that led up to some of the events from that season. So uh, please, uh, I've already said the Discord. You want to catch our back episodes? Pop over to YouTube. You want to see the, the Meet the Cast where we, everyone talked about the characters and gave you some, some history, even though we've got nice bio slides right, over, right there. I mean, with Red's face right now on it. Shh. You're gonna, you can go and watch the Meet the Cast where we talked about our characters. Uh, you want to see Windy City Chronicle. Uh, we've got Vampire. We've got Werewolf. We've got Demon. We've got Changeling. We've got Mage. We've got uh, Wraith the Oblivion. Holy shit. We got all the World of Darkness. And then we even got a bunch of independent stuff like Zasser Kala, Bluebeard's Bride. You will destroy something beautiful. I mean, we've got so much content. Jesus damn Christ. If you want to see Call of Cthulhu or D&D, go to Ishbel. That's uh, our wonderful British DM. Dr. Tiss, uh, you'll be uh, hearing about her game when my lovely wife gives the schedule. So uh, we'll get to that. Um, Emmy Lou wants to know who wins Chicago in the end. Uh, Kevin keeps his Princeton. 
at the end of this Praxis War, though it's not the same Princeton he had before, because the Just Cars decided that his mismanagement led to the masquerade breaches and the explosions, and he now has a advisor in the name of one Don Akata, Malkavian Archon, who is a walking computer. He is prince after this night, or after this Praxis War, in name only, in the Shanky universe. Rules because the Justicars find it convenient to leave him there. You want to see great content creators? Look at our friends list in chat. One of them, Mischievous Red, right there, right down, right there we go. I can point. I'll give everybody a chance to say where there are other places uh, after the schedule, but uh, check out Mischievous Red's channel there. Um, let's see. Uh, you want to get some studio merch? We've got Windy City or uh, Windy City. We got Windy City merch. We don't have any Kansas City merch, uh, but one of the things I'm wanting to do in the next month is create the movie style posters like we had for Windy City. I want to create a Kansas City version because I love the movie posters that we do for the stream. And I think it'll look great to have one for Kansas. Uh, we had one for uh, reflecting all the cast changes that went on in Windy City. We need some for Kansas as well. Uh, though, Andy, I'm sorry, you won't be on the season one's picture. Somehow I'll live. I know. <laughs> uh, if you want to uh, give something to the players of this stream, bits and donations, they go to the players. The studio only takes the taxes out of it because. Unfortunately, Uncle Sam uh, taxes the shit out of us, but uh, bits and donations that go to the player, it's a way for you, the viewer, to show thanks to the players uh, for the hard work, the costuming, the effort that goes into a stream like this. And for those that don't know, we've been preparing for this stream for two months now. That was when the casting call closed. Uh, there's a lot of work behind the scenes to, to pull off something like this. If you want to give to the studio, uh, subscribe on Twitch. Twitch will take half. Sorry. Uh, Go to our coffee. They don't take half. Or if you watch on YouTube, nice free way to support studios, like the video on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video. Uh, that all drives up our in the search ratings, which means we get more views. Uh, and we might make a whole $20 this month on YouTube. Woo! If they don't demonetize us constantly, because I'm constantly fighting. Uh, apparently, TTRPGs have a lot of words that they want to demonetize us for. <laughs> uh, who'd have thought it? Uh, and now... I can turn it over to my lovely wife for the schedule. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for the premiere of Vampire the Masquerade, Kansas City, a Domain Divided. And again, thank you, Brad, for playing Andy, the sacrificial lamb. His character sheet in Fantasy Grounds actually had the icon, the portrait icon of a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up over the next week, tomorrow, Tiss is streaming with her group of investigators with special guest, your any, not your Audi, <laughs> at 3 p.m. Eastern on only here at, like I said, Saturday, 3 p.m. It is Call of Cthulhu 7E, London Esoteric Society. And then Sunday at noon, running until about 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. We have our marathon of Vampire the Masquerade V5, Windy City After Dark, so you can catch out, catch up on the chronicle that we have finished. We are picking up at the end of season four, so it's going to be like sessions eight, nine, and ten, possibly in the uh, mid-season like intermission stuff too, if that fits in. So check that out on Sunday, and then Wednesday. We will be here at 8 p.m. Eastern for Vampire the Masquerade Dark Ages, our V20 V5 hybrid game playing the Transylvania Chronicle source material. Um, so join us for that. We just recently showed a Hungarian venture what it means to not show due respect when entering a city. Yeah. Yeah. His hands got sent to the Hungarian Ventru. His feet got sent with a Zemitsi Nez. And now he's staked and parked and awaiting for a certain La Sombra to just eat him. Um, so... <laughs> yeah, not a good time for the Hungarian Ventru coming up soon. 
he's fucked. <laughs> well, boy, you're fucked. You're fucked. Um, right. Well, you're fucked. Yeah, and I'm sure other fucked up shit will happen on Wednesday, so join us, because we do have a Zamitsi that thinks he owns that fucking city that we are running, and we also still have a fucking mage bishop inquisitor running amok somewhere. So, yeah, we've got problems. Um, then Thursday, join us for the finale of Old Gods of Appalachia on right here at 8 p.m. Eastern Thursday. It's myself, Brad, Revvin Powers, Shanky playing at the table of Ravnos Archon. Oh, my God. I am loving that game so much. I need more of it in my life. For real. For real. I fucking love the cipher system. I love old gods of Appalachia. I love that shit. I love that shit. The cipher um, system's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot. It's so broken, but it's broken in the most beautiful ways. <laughs> <laughs> Great story. Great story. Yep. Um, and then, of course, Friday, we will be back here. We will skip three months ahead and be here at at 8 p.m. Eastern next Friday, except for Andy. Um, the rest of us ex and Bo, unfortunately, is going to spend a little bit of time in Milwaukee. But the rest of us will be starting to set up shop in Kansas City. Sure, that's going to be great. I'm sure nothing bad will happen nothing at, a Sabat, bad will be at a city the Sabat still thinks they own. setting up shop in a war zone. It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be a different chronicle than our Windy City was, but for sure. But war is what Cat knows. So, you know. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So, we'll be back here next Friday. Yep. We hope to see you then. And now, I, I'm going to go around the table. Uh, you got anything else going on there, Callum, out there? Or are you just pretty much playing this? What you got? No, I'm just, I'm just here. So, hey, check him out on the Discord. <laughs> D. Davis on the Discord. You got questions about his character? You can pop down to uh, Kansas City, a domain divide or a domain divided channel and ask him about his character right there. Uh, Rashad, you got anything else going on on the net right now? I do. Uh, this Sunday, I will be running a cypher system campaign titled We Are Heroes. So come and check us out on Rerolls uh, on Twitch and see how we do. Uh, go ahead and put the link in chat. So that people can see the link. Uh House, what you got going on? I know one thing you got going on. I'm going to let you talk about it. Yes, we are back after a few month hiatus. The Fancast at Four podcast, the number one Fantastic Four fan casting podcast on the internet, presumably. Uh, this last episode, we asked, what would it be like if Jeff Probst of Survivor produced a Survivor themed Fantastic Four show? Uh, and then upcoming, we will be doing. Uh, what if John Carney, director of films such as Once, Sing Street, Begin Again, uh, directed a Fantastic Four film? Uh, so be on the lookout for that in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, that's what I got going on. When are you doing What If Matt Stone and Trey Parker directed a Fantastic Ooh, good Four question. film? Good question. We are, you know, the, the podcast is going to be coming to a close probably sometime next year. But I will add that to the list of certain of suggestions. I do like the idea of that. <laughs> That'll be a problem. Uh, Gwen up there, what you got going on other than Mischievous Red right there and Rerolls is his channels right there in chat. But what you got going on there, uh, Gwen? Yeah, so I'm actually starting to stream again. We're getting back to it on Sunday. We're doing a creative co-work stream. Um, with me and one of my friends, and I'm actually going to be doing some world building for a visual novel I'm making. Excellent. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Shit. I'm not very good at world building. <laughs> I just make that shit up as I go. I don't know how you do that. I'm a huge prepper. World improving. <laughs> yeah. World improving. <laughs> at the end of season one of this chronicle, during the Q and A that we do at the end of each season. Ask me how much of the entire season I prepared ahead of time and how much was me improv -ing. Go ahead and ask. No, he's prepped a few things like um, clans that are in court positions. No, I haven't. <laughs> you have some. I have ideas. I haven't written them down. They're all up here. All my ideas, none of it's written down yet for the city. It's all in my head. Yeah, I, I like ma ma Machete. I, I also like to say he likes to run games by the seat of his pants. <laughs> nope, I run games by the hair on my head. 
<laughs> and my chinny chin chin. <laughs> it's a visual novel. I have to write down some of it. Oh, yeah. Like, you do. That is kind of the point. <laughs> yeah. I'll have stuff written down. Uh, I will. I need to just put what's in my head into written form. Or not, because I can generally keep it all straight in my head somehow. Don't know how. But uh, as always, when we end the stream here at McStabber Studios, uh, at least when I'm running the stream or my wife's running it, uh, mental health, everybody. It's not a joke. It's not a laughing matter. Uh, we take mental health very seriously on this channel. Uh, we want you to take care of yourself. Uh, we want you to take care of others. Uh, please reach out to those around you. Make sure they're okay. A lot of people are not okay right now in this world, and sometimes it takes a friendly voice kind voice or just a friend asking, are you okay to help them out? And if you suffer from mental health issues, the first thing I want to tell you is it's okay to not be okay. A lot of people out there, myself included, suffer with mental health issues and nothing to be ashamed of admitting that. And I want you, if you're, you're having struggles, reach out to your own support network. Uh, that's what the dare for. And I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable doing that. So if you don't, in chat's a list of numbers. You can call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There will be a professional on the other end of the line, either call or text, to help you out. Uh, because mental health is health, everybody. And we want you to take care of yourself. Mental health is just as important as physical health. So please, take care of yourselves. And I'll turn it over to my lovely wife for her portions that she likes to give of the outro. As I've said many times, as the mind goes, the body goes. Mental health and physical health go hand in hand. So take care of your mind. Take care of your body. It is that time of year. Get your flu vaccine. Get your COVID booster. You can get them both same day. It's going to knock you on your ass for at least a day. Some people, it takes a little longer. But, you know, it's worth it. It protects you. It protects your family, your loved ones, your friends, everyone around you. Um, for real. It doesn't stop you from getting the illnesses. That's not how vaccines work. OK, it builds herd immunity. If we get enough people vaccinated, we won't have to worry about people catching it. Um, but yeah, so seriously, get vaccinated. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, um, make sure you're registered to vote. Ohio and Virginia right now have an election this year, and it's going on currently. Please make sure you are voting. All elections matter. All of them, even the tiny little local ones. Those matter. Because people that are on the ballots in local elections and state elections end up eventually, a lot of them, end up trying to play on the federal field. So who you pick in those small little elections makes a difference now and later. Okay? And fuck the GOP. We're going on three weeks and they still can't even fucking agree on a speaker. Yeah. I wish I could not do my job and still get paid for not doing my job three for weeks straight. For real, they are wasting taxpayer money. Yep. <laughs> I have a yes on issue one, yes. Yes on issue and one. And yes on issue two, because you need some weed these days, trust me. Mm -hmm. The world's getting fucked up, weed's a good, you know, y'all might need some hey, weed. it's recreational now in Maryland, y'all, I'm yep. just saying. <laughs> not for me, it's not. <laughs> no, because you uh, you work a fed job, but yeah. Yep. <laughs> But uh, Janky, that uh, that speaker position is what we call a single point of failure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a single point of failure. Yep. And it's in a Republican controlled house. Three damn weeks of not doing their job. They've mm -hmm. got a budget they need. to. That is their only job is to pass. That's the only thing the house has to do is pass a budget. Mm -hmm. uh, the country will endure without a budget. With, with a budget passed, the country will endure if they pass no more laws. Yeah. You got to pass a budget. Yeah. And if you think, well, you know, we can afford to shut the government down. I got bad news for you. It'll hurt worse than you understand when the it government shuts down. It doesn't just impact the government or the contractors that work for the government. It impacts businesses that provide services for those employees. Because when those employees don't get paid, they aren't getting lunch. They aren't going out to eat. They're not going to the dry cleaners. They're not going to the dry cleaners. Hell, they're probably not even picking up their fucking meds from the drugstore because they can't afford it. Yep. Okay. There's an entire ancillary uh, <laughs> economy that runs. They don't work for the government. It's people that 
uh, have businesses support that the workers. Support the workers, mm-hmm. and they get impacted by this. That we're talking millions of people yeah. get impacted by this. And without the budget they have now, even the soldiers won't be getting paid. And I can tell you, I was a soldier. It really upsets me to hear that because I know how little I made. Yeah, and, they're uh, already making poverty level. Yeah, not uh, below poverty. Yeah, or uh, below, depending on your rank. There is nobody E4 and under that can afford to miss a single paycheck. Not a single one. And I know this because I was one. Yeah, so, I was an E4 when I got out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. You couldn't afford a single paycheck loss. You didn't make enough. mm So, uh, dear God. Yeah. So, needless to say, they're giving us all the ammunition we need to literally divest them from power come next year when all seats are up for election in the house please register to vote and go out and vote when that time comes please i will never tell you who to vote for but i will tell you uh look at the party that can't even fucking pass a speaker and understand they're not interested in governing they're interested in burning shit down that's all i can warn you look at the ones who are taking away women's rights body rights trans rights uh Human rights. Banning rights. books. Banning books. <laughs> because yeah. they want you stupid. Yeah. Look at the ones who are doing that. Please don't vote for them. And, and they're, they're, they're relying on voter apathy. Yeah. Yep. Like, it, it's who can they lie to and, don't believe, and who isn't going to go vote. Right. And, and don't believe the fucking polls because the only people that answer the fucking phone for those polls tend to be elderly people with nothing <laughs> else to do. I know none of the younger generation answers phones now for unknown numbers because of spam. I don't the fucking phone unless I know the number, yep. okay? So we've ranted enough. <laughs> I do want to thank you all. It's getting hot in this studio. I need to get the hell out of the studio because as you can see by my forehead, I'm burning up. So uh, good night, everybody. Good night.